Have you downloaded AutoCAD blocks from the internet? If you have, then you know how they come. Blocks always come in the wrong scale, and in the worst scenario, you can even get a computer virus. This is why if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. My name is Irvin, and I'm the founder of The Lazy Architecto for time-saving AutoCAD tools and tutorials for architects. I strongly believe North Arrows is one of the most used blocks in AutoCAD. And in this video, I'm going to share with you the three simple steps to have a time-saving North Arrow dynamic block. If you follow this, not only will you save time in your drawings, but you will learn about the best practices for working with AutoCAD blocks. Are you ready? Step 1. Create your AutoCAD North block. For this, where do you think I should start? In paper space or in model space? What do you think? Well, the answer is, you can do it in both, however, your life would be much easier if you do it in model space, because this is the true size of the AutoCAD objects. So let's do it here, and let's follow this drawing scale chart, because we are going to draw these based on the AutoCAD standards. So whether you use this on model or paper space, if you follow these standards, your AutoCAD North block will work nicely. You'll see it later. So let's start drawing a circle using the C shortcut and type D for a diameter. Let's type 5 feet for this diameter. Next, I'll draw a line from this point to this and also from here to here. I'll offset 6 inches and use the extend command to extend all of these lines. Now you can get rid of this circle. Next let's draw the arrow so PL for the polyline shortcut and let's go around like so. Now we can use the offset command by typing the shortcut O and pressing enter. Let's offset 10 inches. Now we can select both polylines and use the explode command by typing the X shortcut to explode these two polylines. And let's use now the fillet command by typing the F shortcut. Select this line and this, this line and this other one. Now we can get rid of this by simply using the delete shortcut. Now we can do offset 5 inches to this side and 5 inches to this other side to complete your north arrow. Click here and here. Now use the fillet shortcut to fillet these two lines and these other two and finally these other two. So next if you want to be a little fancy we can offset two inches all of the lines And using the extend command, you can extend that line, that one, this, this other one. Now 
now you can get rid of the lines that you don't need anymore we're doing pretty good so far and now let's add a hatch to this north arrow so let me select all of the lines to the arrow and deselect holding shift the circle now use the isolate command and let's use the H shortcut for the hatch command make sure solid is selected and click inside your arrow and press enter now we can use the unisolate command and use the HB shortcut to send the hatch to the back. So we're almost done. The only thing that we can do now is add a attribute definition. Type in the ATT def command. And here I'm just I just like to keep things simple so line one line one for this other one and for the default since we always have two options only the first one being the true north and the second one the project north so for my case uh, I mostly use project north so I'm gonna put project here and make sure lock position is checked as well as specify on screen here for the justification would be middle center the textile I'll pick Verdana and here for the text height let's take a look at our drawing scale chart and if you see here the text for our north arrow block wouldn't be uh, under notes neither major heading so the right text height would be a standard text height so this would be one eighth of an inch height if we were in paper space but since we are in model space uh, the correct size would be 12 inches why one eighth of an inch well because this is the actual standard text height in architectural drawings so let's put 12 inches and click OK so now we're gonna place this right in the center let's move it a little bit up and let's repeat the same command to add one more attribute in this case it's gonna be for the line 2 and the default is gonna be north and we are going to pick the same settings as our last attribute move it up a little bit alright to finish this up let's select all of them and use the block command I'll call this north arrow you can call it north direction north sign it's all up to you make sure the base point specify on the screen is checked also scale uniformly is checked and click OK finally select the base point for your new AutoCAD North Arrow block 
will be here in the center as you can see we have our first issue in this case the attributes text are in the wrong location line 1 is in the bottom and line 2 it's at the top so let me share with you an attribute trick that I used to avoid this issue let's undo and in order to select all of the objects to make a block with the attributes let's type block first name our block and here where it says objects check specify on a screen now when you click OK and follow the instructions to specify first your insertion point which is over here now it's asking you to select the objects in order to avoid the issue of location of our attributes we need to select the attributes in the correct order so I'll pick all of these objects first then I'll pick the line 1 and finally the line 2 and press enter as you can see the line 1 attribute now is placed correctly as well as the line 2 so let's click OK and just to make sure I'll double click on it so you can change it to true north for the line 1 and so on step 2 we need to make your north block a dynamic block so in order to do this let's double click on it as you can see double clicking doesn't open the block editor so to open it right click on it and choose block editor here to make this a dynamic block let's go to the block authoring palette which is right here if you don't see it open it from your ribbon before I made this block a dynamic block there is something that I want to change really quick which is the direction of this arrow I just noticed that it is facing to the left however we mostly place our plants north facing up now we're ready so let's add a parameter to this block in this case would be the rotation parameter so click on it I'll click to specify the base point over here and the radius over here now to pick the default rotation angle we need it facing this north arrow so that it's 90 so that is 90 degrees so type 90 and press enter now click here and as you can see an, an exclamation mark is showing this simply means that this parameter needs an action so let's go to the action palette and let's add a rotation action following the instructions on the bottom let's select the parameter and now let's select the objects in this case we need only the arrow to rotate so let's select the arrow and deselect the circle now you can press enter so let's test this block
And as you can see, your AutoCAD Dynamic North Arrow block is ready. Let's so let's type B close to get out of the block editor mode and make sure save changes. Step 3. Insert your AutoCAD Dynamic Block North Arrow. In order to have your North Arrow available anytime and anywhere, you'll need the tool palette. So to open it, type Control 3 and you're gonna first save your drawing using the Q save command then click and holding the left mouse button you're gonna click and drag it all the way to your tool palette next you can right click on it and choose properties here you can specify some settings such as layer I always place my north arrow on a layer called a north arrow so I'll pick so I'll select it and click OK now if I insert my north arrow block either in paper space or model space let me do it first on model space you can see that it will come in the correct layer as well as the correct size however if we try to insert it here in paper space you can see that our north arrow comes out of scale so to fix this issue and like I mentioned before make this dynamic block north arrow work either in model or paper space we're gonna do the following so let's remove this and let's get inside our viewport and this north arrow that is the one that has the correct scale let's do a copy really quick and use the change space command now select this block and press enter as you can see now this block it's now in paper space and this other one is in model space so the reason we did this is because now if we select this block and go to properties remember we are in paper space now we can see that the scale is 0 0.0104 so let's go back to model space and let's right click on it and go to the block editor let's quickly select all and use the scale command to select this a factor of 0 0.0104 we can close this now and save as you can see our dynamic north arrow block got smaller however this block has the correct scale now which is one to one let me show you now how it will work so if we take a look at our drawing scale chart you can see that for a drawing scale in this case of one eighth of an inch our factor would be 96 so if we go back to model space and select our block here from the properties palette you can change the scale to 96 you'll see that when you go to paper space 
your block has the correct scale so we can select this north arrow now from the paper space and change it the scale to 1 as you can see we set it up your dynamic block so it can work either in model or paper space save more time with these other AutoCAD dynamic blocks